Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another episode of Testing in Nutshell. This is Neeraj Kumar Singh and we are talking about Load Runner tutorials. This would be our last tutorial on ViewGen. As far as we have discussed all the mandatory options which you need to understand in ViewGen. So today we'll be talking about the tool options that is what are the common settings which are available from the point of ViewGen. And there are a lot of interesting options which you will find and explore as a part of this option. And there are certain things which you can actually enable to make your interaction with the VUGEN more interesting. And of course, there are certain things which you may wonder sometime that how people use that, but you don't find a related option anywhere in recording or replay setting. So how exactly do you configure some of these options is what we will be targeting in our today's tutorial. So let's get started quickly and understand the same today. As a part of this tutorial, we are talking about the tool options of ViewGen, which basically means that ViewGen is the tool here and there are some tool specific options and settings also available. And as a part of this tutorial, we'll be covering general options, editor options and scripting options. To begin with this particular option, you need to navigate to the tools in the menu and drop down to select the options at the bottom. Now this is different than the replay runtime settings and the recording settings which you find here. So you, in order to go to options, you just have to select the options here and you will have a new pop-up opened called as options. And that's where we need to figure out that they have three different tabs called as general, editor, and scripting. So let's understand overview of all these options which will help you at any point of time to understand. To get started, the first thing what we are looking at is the general tab, which includes different options like task list, which at the bottom you do find in your uh, the overview of the view gen. At the bottom pane, you have a task pane, which you can define here that if there are any tags, fix me, to do. If you want to add a new tag, you want to edit existing or delete them. You can include the task list and define just like statuses to different activities. Usage data collector will basically go ahead with collecting the information during the execution. And this will basically go ahead to the uh, the load runner, that is the micro focus, to collect information from you based on your usage and define if there are anything needs to be improvised at any point of time. Scripts and solutions will have some of the settings from the directory where exactly it is saved. So by default, it will be your documents where your ViewGen scripts are being saved temporarily if in case you forgot to save the test. So there is always a list of tests which you will find there even though you have not saved any of the test. Also load previous solutions on startup. That means if you want to continue where you stopped before closing the last time, then of course you can enable this option here and it will begin from where you left last time. Also, you have some start page settings, which you generally get on the launch of it. So you can display the start page on startup. If you don't want to see them, you can just disable this and close start page after the script loads. The moment I load a particular script, the start page disappears. So these settings can be managed from here. ALM is only used when you connect or integrate this tool with the ALM. Of course, ALM is a test management tool and I do have tutorials for that as well. And uh, ALM connectivity can be very well done with respect to ViewGen as well in order to import the execution status to the ALM and can be useful for mapping your requirements to these tests. Message dialogs. By default, you have some of the messages coming in the messages tab, which is the errors tab here. And here we have three types of messages. That is information, uh, caution, as well as error. So you can define that whether you want the update message, information messages, question messages, warning messages, and all those messages which you want to showcase. So just quickly to show you, I'm taking up back to you to error. And here are the three tabs and you can just enable what all do you want to see as a part of these sections. So that's what the option menu and the editor, uh, sorry, the general message dialogue option allows you to set it up. Similarly, we do have a community which is on the home page that is the start page of our ViewGen. And if in case you want to have the URL being updated tomorrow, you can definitely come and change here and include any other URLs or links which feel uh, you know useful for you during ViewGen. So you may have a list of blog blogspots or any other pages which are like a help guidelines or the help support document. You can include them here by just clicking on add button. So click on add, include the name and the URL and press OK and it will be listed. And these all lists will be displayed to you on the start page. 
The next tab here is editor and editor basically deals with the uh, editing of the entire script. So of course all the scripting part what you see here this page this white canvas is called as editor and all the settings related to that is here. So general is of course the font you can see the font and the font size and the preview of that particular uh, font style here. If you want you can change from all the various available font styles and the size as well which will show you the difference as a preview here. Also you have a word wrap option if in case your lines are so lengthy that cannot fit into your editor view you can also do a wrap of the word which will break that into next line but of course it will not be by cutting the syntax it will just be wrapping the text in one particular editor. Markers and rulers basically helps you to align your activities accordingly like all the lines which you have written will be aligned properly as per the rulers and the markers and similarly you do have like you know underline the errors highlight matching brackets highlight matching occurrences of non keywords so just like any other scripting language you do have these features enabled already but here you can control it as it is a testing tool. And moreover, it is a performance test tool, so you will definitely define the way you can customize it your way. Behavior, which is from the point of indentation or the tabs which you have here. So you can definitely make use of this, that is use smart indentation on convert tabs to spaces and so on. Right now it is enabled with use smart indentation, that's where here in the script you see an indent automatically when you start with a function and write the details about it. Also from the behavior point of view, enable zoom with mouse wheel. That means when you press control and move your mouse wheel, you can zoom in and zoom out. Cut or copy entire line when nothing is selected and enable control plus kick keyboard shortcut for go to definition. So there are a lot of such shortcuts which you can actually find and make use of it. Coming to the code color, of course the code color, if you see this uses a fantastic color scale here which shows green for the commands and some of the values and function color is different, the parameter name or the object name is different again in the color, the end item is blue in color, links are blue in color, so all those things you can actually define here that you can make use of all the parameters listed here and you can define the color code for that as far as you are interested to make some changes. Similarly, the code completion, enable code completion features, which basically means the auto completion option. When you start writing some of your scripts, you do see a suggestion that is auto complete. And this is where the option can be selected in order to enable or disable auto complete features. Similarly, the folding option basically allows you to fold the steps like, you know, the, num the longer the step is, it will fold that into the next line and so on. The last one is scripting, which is completely related to scripting features, so starting with the recording options. And here, this is not your recording settings, but these are recording options. Enable recording floating toolbar transparency mode, because sometimes it hampers or it just blocks your view on the application when you're working on a full size or full screen mode. So you can enable it as a transparency mode. That means it will become automatically transparent and you can see behind the toolbar of the recording as well. Enable cancel recording button as soon as you start recording. So you always say that whenever you record a script you see the disable button or cancel recording button is automatically enabled as soon as you start. Open start recording dialog box automatically close transactions which is to auto detect and check the internet connection before recording. So all these checks can be basically performed for the recording and this is up to you again. These are all defaults right now and if you want to put them off, put them on, you can just decide on that. Replay settings again like this is not replay setting. This is basically the options again. So do not switch the layout during replay. That means if I set a layout that I want solution explorer on the left, the script here and at the bottom I want runtime data to be displayed. So when I mark this option, it will not change the layout. For example, if I run this particular test right now, it will change the layout to a different layout. So I have a view layout as well as a real replay layout. So I can block that and use the same layout what I'm using right now and no resizing of the windows by default. Similarly, animated run is possible. You can animate the run delay by one second. That means the activity will happen, but it will wait for some time to show you as a viewer. Enable result or replay summary, which is again related to the execution and the outcome of that. During replay, show runtime viewer. This is the option where you can see the application side by side during the execution. 
team. Uh, the only reason we don't see an application here because we are executing the test on the server and we don't really need anything like that. So if you want to see the application during the replay, you can definitely make use of this option. Similarly, we have got the script management to make use of different languages which can be supported. Comparison of two different scripts if you're making use of. You can definitely call them and compare and see that if there are any specific changes between them. Step Navigator is again on the right, left hand side here at the bottom, which shows you the different functions put together as a step. So you can find all the options to change the color in order to highlight them. Thumbnail views, which you have definitely enabled yourself on some of our tutorials to see the thumbnails at the bottom. You can definitely include them to see the preview snapshot of each and every page which you work with. The output pane, of course, showcases you the outputs, uh, which includes different logs like the replay log, compilation log, recording log, and code generation log. So if you again, you want to wrap up the text because it might be longer enough, so you can wrap it up or you can definitely change the font of the replay log as well. And, uh, and of course, the other settings. Similarly, when it comes to the protocols, if you are using any specific protocols, that will also be listed here, for example, Java. If you're using Eclipse IDE to import your script and so on, you can definitely make use of this to browse it and import it. Similarly for Citrix, if you're making use of Citrix as a platform, you can enable that and make use of it. We do have settings for our options for correlation because the settings lies in the recording and replay, but here is the option like, do you want to enable from the replay snapshots or not, which basically correlates even from the replay. Like during the replay, whether this dynamic value was resolved, if not, it will pop up and show you that, yes, there are some values to be correlated. Similarly, snapshots captures all your activities on the application and helps you to do manual correlation. So you can set it up according to your need using these settings to highlight them. Parameters are completely limited to the parameterization. As you can see, one of the parameter here called as fly underscore from, and the second one is fly underscore to. So you can define the left parameter delimiter, right parameter delimiter, the parameter background color, and the parameter border color. So you see a border, there's a small blue color box here, which is due to this feature. If you don't want this, you can definitely change the color to something else. And parser, which is basically in order to parse the script and helps you to check that if it could meet all the uh, syntax and the criteria of the standard scripting. So by default, it will be enabled. And that's the reason at the bottom here, you see that before every run, it goes with script parsing succeeded, then replay status passed. So as far as the parsing happens, this replay will pass. If the parsing fails, the replay will not be conducted. So what exactly do we have here? There's a message here saying that disabling the C language parser may improve application performance when working with very large script. However, the following features or functionality will be disabled. Editing setup arguments in the editor pane, step navigator, correlation, script regeneration, snapshot, task, thumbnail, inline code completion, and a lot many other features like this will also be disabled if you put it off. So now you know that what exactly this parser is all about. It checks for everything that do we have all the supporting information available. And if you want to improve your execution performance, then you can disable it. But with that, you also disable all these information. And that's the reason it is enabled by default. Well, so that was all we are talking about the tool options as a part of ViewGen. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.